Paul, now the dust has settled on the campaign, how do you look back over the season? Yeah, still, the result, the final result, probably only just sinking in now, you know, disappointment of it, our season's over. Um, yes, I certainly won't be watching the player final, you know. I'll, I'll, should have been us, I wished it would have been us. Uh, so I won't be watching a player final, but season as a whole, um, been a roller coaster, lots of ups and downs. I've enjoyed every minute of it, like I said, just wish it had gone on longer. So, yeah, there's lots of things we can be, be pleased with. Um, but it's tough to be pleased when, like I say, when you wish you'd have got something more out of it. So that's my overriding feelings. But, yeah, it, it moves straight into next season um, and begin that the planning and, and everything ready to, to start next season really well. Clearly, you want the season to continue, but looking back, you have achieved quite a lot in such a short space of time here. Yeah, I think things have been positive, you know. Um, the players have been fantastic, the staff's been great, the support of the fans has been superb and, yeah, that's a disappointment because there's so much effort gone in and uh, we've really enjoyed the games both home and away and bringing that connection back with the fans and the team and it's a big thank you to the fans. We, we would have loved to have done it for them, you know, and uh, they feel as much as us, you know, the ups and downs, the wins, the losses the big moments in games and yeah, for it to come down to penalty kicks was, was tough and tough for everyone, but um, we'll come back stronger, we'll be fighting and uh, hopefully we'll get the same support again next season because we need everyone, I, I say it all the time, we do, we need everyone, everyone on the same page, everyone competing and by the looks of things at the minute, it's going to be a, a hell of a championship, you know, with the teams that's coming up, teams that's gone down, it looks like it's going to be a real tough league. It was a season that wasn't short on adversity, I'm thinking Covid and of course the, the growing injury list that you had to contend with. So with all that in mind, you must be quite proud of how far you've come really. Yeah, it's tough. I, like, so you're not pleased because of how it ended. Uh, but I'm proud of how people cope with things and the message we still... We, we could have had excuses for lots of things, but, but we didn't. We, we, um, we're not going to do that. So. Uh, so that's one thing when I look back, how we handled those things was, was really good. Um, whether it's play, players playing out position, players playing when they weren't fit, which we had that, we had to have that, players putting themselves forward, um, the spirit of the group, you know, the boys who weren't in the team at the time, boys, boys injured, um, that's what made it enjoyable for me, you know, and, and hopefully it did for the players as well, because you could see then the, the spirit on the pitch, which... Um, is all you want to see, um, and I think that was evident in the final game, right up until the final whistle. For you personally, though, starting the season as under-23s manager, then becoming first-team manager, and then used a couple of kicks away from going to Wembley. It's been a real roller coaster for you personally as well. Yeah, it has. Yeah, um, yeah, that, and that's football. You, that's you've got to enjoy it. It's, um, it's a tough job, but an enjoyable one. I've never, I've, I've never said anything other than, you know, it's unique. You, you can't explain it. Um, Football management is different. Listen, the, the, the coaching of 23 was fantastic and I put just as much effort into that. I uh, found it even tougher sometimes, you know, because um, I like working with players, love, being, love the football part of it, love working with players. So, but obviously when you step up and, you, and you're managing the first team, there's a lot more um, to the job. So the bits you love can be diluted sometimes if you're not careful. And, um, but obviously there's a lot more responsibility that rides with it because there's a lot more people aware of what you're doing and affected by what you're doing. So, yeah, there's certainly responsibility at a club like this to, to be managing it. Um, so I don't take it for granted and, it, and it's something I really enjoy, you know. So, yeah, long may it continue. And just to draw a line under last season, uh, final word really, quite unsavoury instance at the end of the second leg of the playoffs. And unfortunately, that's carried on into other games as well. Um, let's hope maybe this is a watershed moment and these kind of incidents don't happen in the future. Yeah, I hope so. I, I, I've experienced it as a player on the receiving end, uh, as a manager. And now, obviously, one, one of our players, one of my players, um, suffering an attack like that is, is shocking. Um, and this is not me speaking against Forrest because we've seen a lot of it all over football and, and the frustrating thing is we know it's going to happen in these type of games, we know it's going to happen at the end of the season and, and we've been saying for years it's only a matter of time, well that's happened so we have to use this so nothing gets worse, you know, if, if we're sitting here next season and we've seen similar incidents, 
whether you know you look at the thing with Patrick walking off at Goodison Park it's, it's until you've been there you don't know how threatening it is and you don't know how you're going to react um, because no one else is put in them situations and we have to we have to remove that so yeah something I, I feel strongly about I've wrote letters to the to the uh, LMA to the PFA where their members you know and and we want them to fight for us to protect us and also I've wrote letters to the EFL and the FA you know they have a duty of care to protect people when they're in the place of work and, and as much as we want fans involvement and the joy um, we, we can't let this happen we just can't so something yeah I feel strongly about uh, Richard Bevan at the LMA wrote back to me straight away and there's a lot of people feel the same way there's a lot of people involved now in discussions to to try and rectify this because there's a number of ways which you could go. Some of them we probably don't want to see, but but we may go, have to go down that route because we have to make sure that people know it's unacceptable, not the joy, not the celebrating, but it was only a matter of time in my eyes before something happened and, and we have to stop it before something even worse happens. So, yeah, it was a poor way to end the season from our point of view uh, and I've not enjoyed watching it in the other games so, yeah, it's. Um, but we have to use it. Like I said, we'd be foolish if we sat here in 12 months' time and we've seen the same things happen again. Um, someone's at fault because I think there's, there's too many of us now committed to trying to change things. Looking ahead to next season, I know a lot of work has already uh, been completed, likes of Billy, Bash, Jack Robinson, Ben Osborne, all agreeing new deals. Um, the retain list has gone out this morning, so how pleased are you with plans so far for the next campaign? Yeah, things that things are going. We, we we'll have some more boys, I think, who will tie down, which is important. Obviously, we want to see some new faces as well before the start of next season, which will be great. Um, we've got a pre-season trip organised. We've got five or six games already put in the schedule. So, uh, in terms of that respect, we, we're ready to go. Yeah. So, from a personal point of view, I'll be heading off in a bit for a for a little break and, and relaxing. Um, but you never stop, yeah, you're always um, always working and uh, yeah, to, to try and make sure we, we just get those final pieces of the jigsaw and, and everything in place ready to go and listen, whatever happens next season, we'll give it as best. Um, hopefully there's as many exciting times as, as there was this uh, and, and one less disappointment. You saw like an immediate positive reaction to when you took over back in November. So with that in mind, how much are you looking forward to having a full pre-season with this team now as well? Yeah, I am because of what it it helps you uh, bring in the season, fitness, you know, the condition of players, um, the tactical element, bedding in new players, all that's really important. Of course it is. Uh, but me personally, I'm not a fan of pre-season. I'd rather just get the season started. You know, it's as a player, I didn't enjoy it. Uh, as a manager, I don't enjoy it because there's nothing on the games. It's a different feeling when you're on the side of the pitch. So, but that's my own personal things, and I, I know I have to put that to bed. And and, and it serves a different purpose pre-season to get you ready to go. So, yeah, some aspects I know important is, and looking forward to it getting ready to go. Um, and then others, from a selfish point of view, I'd rather it, you know, be straight to the games that really matter. And I know some players will be getting a much deserved rest, but. The injured players who've been out for a while, they'll be working hard throughout the summer. We've seen a few of them in today, so a lot of work ahead for those guys as well. Yeah, and it's a strange off-season. Um, obviously, we start back the season earlier because of uh, the World Cup, so we're going to have a, a four-week break in the middle of the season, which is strange. We have um, we start a week early, so that means we, we're back in training in the middle of June. Uh, we've got players who, like I said, a lot of long-term as we're back. We want them fit. And we've also now, then got several players away on international duty and they'll be away until uh, the middle of June. So we have to give them extra rest before we come back so they can unwind physically and mentally. So there's lots of things that will be different in this pre-season and a bit disjointed, but yeah, we'll not be the only club contending with that. So um, yeah, it's important the players get the rest and unwind. And what's been a long season, lots of things gone off and uh, then we'll be ready to go come the, the 30th of July. And just finally, you've touched upon it a little bit already, but we're already seeing really strong season ticket sales for next year. The fans have clearly bought into what you're trying to do and are looking forward to the next campaign. Yeah, I, I hope they've enjoyed Bramall Lane as, as much as I have and, and the games. We've seen some really big performances there, big results. 
and and we want the same next season. We want, you know, I want even more. I want even more of an atmosphere at Bramall Lane, even more from the fans. Uh, I want I want it to feel yeah so intense and enjoyable that that it more or less drags a performance out the players. So yeah, the, the more we get in there, the more season ticket sales we get, the better. Um, and I think it's really important, you know, um, that, that's the way the fans can help. And when you believe me, when you're on the pitch or sit on the sideline and, and you get that support, it's uh, it's what you play for.